Hello and welcome. This is OCR, Cambridge Nationals in Creative Eye Media R081. This is the exam paper, 25% of the GCSE, an hour and 15 minutes long. And this is from June 2018. So obviously read this very, very carefully in your exam, fill your details in, make sure you use black ink, and fill those details in really clearly. Total number of marks for this paper is out of 60. And as always, with every exam, quality of written communication is really important. So, Section A, Words from the Planet is a new conservation campaign. Purpose of increasing the awareness of environmental issues that are faced by our planet. The campaign is targeted at a wide target audience between the ages of 12 and 50. Words from our planet we use a variety of media to raise awareness of the issue faced. Question 1. You've been asked to create a number of pre-production documents at the first campaign meeting. A. Identify three items other than annotations which could be included on a visualisation diagram for a flyer to publicise the words from the planet campaign. So question 2 then. Several short 30 second films will be made to explain each of the environmental issues facing the planet. A. A storyboard will be created for each of these films. Explain one reason why this is the most suitable document for planning these films. With the storyboard, you can see the individual scenes and how long they'll last. You can see how they flow into each other. So I'm going to create my response now. A storyboard is needed to see the individual scenes and how each one long each one will last. B. Explain how the following aspects of the storyboard can help the production team. Camera angles. So the director can see how the image will look in each scene. The film crew will know where to position the camera. Scene number. Scene numbers are important so the editor can see the order to place the scenes into when they're putting the film together. There's my answer for scene numbers there. So where each scene should go when editing the film and putting it together. Camera movements. Camera movements are needed so that the team can position equipment so it's not in view when the camera moves. So that completes that section for six marks there. There are two marks each. Now to get the two marks each you need to be writing more than just a sentence. You need to explain it. So camera movements are needed so that the team can position equipment. So because doesn't want to be in view when the camera moves about. So that's what I need to do to get two marks for that section. Question three. The films will be shown on various websites as well as on screens in amusement parks. Explain how the wide age range of Words of the Planet target audience will affect the content of the film. And this is three marks. So we're thinking about the target audience there and and it is a wide age range. So you're talking children all the way up to seniors. So mustn't have graphic language, must be appropriate. So as um, the younger viewers might not be offended. So anything like that, we're thinking about a wide age range there. So no bad language, appropriate content for a younger audience who may be watching this. So my answer is for three marks, films must not include inappropriate language as younger viewers who could be in the audience may be upset by this. And that's three marks. So films must not include inappropriate language. One mark as younger viewers who could be in the audience. Two marks may be upset by this. Three marks. Identify two aspects other than age of target audience art that could be considered when planning these films. So thinking about location, thinking about race, religion, perhaps gender, accessibility. So I just need to choose one of each of those. And my two points are location and gender. Question four. The name of words on the planet will be trademarked with a TM, little TM symbol. Explain what trademark symbol means when it's used in the campaign's name. What it means is the campaign owns the intellectual property on the name words from the planet. So other people cannot use the name words from the planet because campaign owns the intellectual property of that. The campaign can also take legal action against anyone who uses that name without permission. 
The words from the Planet campaign will use images taken from space showing the world's oceans. The copyright of these images is held by the space organisations who took the images. B. Describe what steps must be taken so these images can be used. The campaign must contact the organisation who made these images to obtain permission for them to be used. And that completes section A. So this is question five, section B. Consider the images in figure one below. So we've got various images there and there's 20 to look at. Now, choose six of these images from figure one to create a mood board for words from the planet campaign. You do not need to draw the images so you don't need to write them, don't need to write them down. You must show which images you've chosen and where you would position them on the mood board. You'll be awarded marks for fitness for purpose, annotation to justify your choices. So getting those annotations in are really important. Now, there's three mark bands here, level what, three, two, and one. Level three being the highest with seven to nine marks, which is the only one we're interested in. We are interested in seven to nine marks only. So we have to choose six appropriate images. We have to justify them and we have to show appropriate structure for the mood board. A mood board is gonna give us a feel for the environmental campaign. So we're thinking about colors, we're thinking about text, we're thinking about images, fonts that we're gonna use. So in this space here, we need to design our mood board. So here is my mood board. And it's not easy for me to draw that on the exam paper but you would use pencil and the pen for this and make sure you'd use ruler you make it really really neat you're going to get marks for that so i've chosen six images there the globe in the hand picture and i've explained why i've chosen that because it represents how fragile the planet is and we hold it in our hands it's up to us to protect it this is my justification smoke picture so this was the smoking chimney showing polluting industries pumping toxic gases into the atmosphere that's why i chose it mountain picture to represent um, part of the planet or inspiring our planet is beautiful and inspire people to want to look after it car picture so there's a picture of traffic lots of cars in there polluting the environment then the earth day picture earth day is dedicated to the planet and raising awareness of it to looking after it and then there was a picture of a toilet seat on a beach I chose that because it's quite a striking image, a beautiful beach with a toilet seat on it. And I chose it because it gets people to think about how we treat the oceans, how we treat beautiful parts of the world. Um, it's not a good look, is it, to see that up there? It's ruining quite a nice beach. So I chose that. And I've also, in addition to my six images, there needs to be six. I've talked about my text there, words from our planet, bold, and maybe put some sizes on there, size 22. How does this image make you feel? You can even write things on there like sans serif font. If you know a font you'd like to use, like uh, Arial, for example, Times New Roman, you could write that on there. And I've written the images are raised to be positive and more negative to emphasize the contrast between the two. So I've got a positive image with a negative next to it and a positive all the way through. So two is positive, nine would be negative and one would be positive, then three would be negative, 18 would be positive and 13 would be a negative image. I've also emphasized the colors I've chosen, greens, browns, and earthy tones to represent the planet. So the main point here is I need to justify my decisions. The images do need to be appropriate. So if we look back at these, some of them possibly aren't quite appropriate. Not sure about the fonts there. Um, polarized, yes, you could say polarized cap, but that looks like someone climbing there. Is that really appropriate? A mask with the tears, that, is that appropriate? You really need to be show some awareness of the audience and purpose here. And that is raising, raising awareness of environmental concerns. So things like um, boots, would that really be appropriate? A boy in a hoodie, would that be appropriate? It needs to be about the planet and raising awareness. So choose appropriate images. So these are the images that I've chosen and I've really gone to town with explaining my justifications there. It's really, really important that you justify that. Um, the difference between level two and level three, so that is six, up to six marks to up to nine marks, is that the justifications are detailed. So you really need to draw out why, why you've chosen these images. And that's really important. So that completes question five. 
Question six, consider the script in figure two below. We've got a script here for a short film and we need to read it very, very carefully. When you get something like this, you need to pick out key points like location. You've got there Alaska. You've got brown bear there. You start off at the foot of a mountain and a presenter there. Then you cut to bear moving across grassland by the river with mountains behind. Then you've got the brown bear moving into towns and the brown bear climbing through a house window before after turning over a bin. So we need to create a mind map from the script in figure two, considering the various aspects that would need to be in the planning of the film, one of the short films. Marks be awarded for layout and fitness for purpose. So due to restrictions as to the way I created this video uh, by writing on the PDF, I've done this just as an animation. So I'd start by creating my mind map by drawing in the middle a circle or an oval shape and writing down planning the short film. Then I pick out the various aspects of the short film. Health and safety, need to think about. Equipment needed. Travel, because Alaska is quite a long way from the UK. And location. So with health and safety, I picked out different points there. Risk of injury to actors. Filming in the forest. So this does need to be laid out as a mind map and I've done my best to kind of do that, represent that as long as there's arrows in there and you've got the main point with sub points there, the different nodes linking to that, then that ca that counts as a mind map. I've got the challenges of filming in the forest, such as hazardous conditions in, in the forest that you might have, concerns for the welfare of the bear, it's an animal, it's unpredictable, it's a wild animal, anything could happen really, risk of injury, Risk of injury to the bear being in town and going through bins. Risk of injury to the actors or the presenter. Uh, it's Alaska, so we've got to think about harsh, con harsh conditions. You must always refer back to the filming location and refer back to the question there. So it being Alaska, you're thinking about harsh weather conditions there as well, which need to be thought about with health and safety. So adequate clothing, adequate clothing for being outdoors and potentially weather weather changing very, very quickly. Now I'm just moving down to equipment needed. Obviously suitable clothing for Alaskan weather conditions. Outdoor equipment needed that needs to be waterproof. The weather turns very quickly. Camera equipment suitable for outdoors. Do you need to have outdoor lighting conditions into, taken into consideration? If you're in a forest area, which could be quite gloomy, do you need to have adequate lighting in there, for example? Need to think about that. Think about adequate lighting for low lights as well. And one thing I should have put in there is, is how are you going to get the equipment to the potentially remote location in Alaska? So that really comes under travel, which is the next point. So travel, obviously you need to book flights to Alaska for the film crew and the actors slash presenter. You need to perhaps charter a helicopter if it's a very remote location probably going to need a four by four. If it's Alaska, it's going to be quite a rocky track. You're going to need some vehicle that is suitable for going over the rocky track, going over those conditions, and maybe a trailer for the equipment and location. So we're thinking about, okay, there is part of the film where the bear is coming out of a house after turning over some bins, going into a house. So you need a house for that. You might need insurance for the location, particularly the house, in case of the damage by the bear. It's a wide, wild animal, anything could happen. It could damage the house. So you need insurance for that, adequate insurance for that. You need a suitable film location in Alaska with the forest town close by, because the film demands that there is a forest scene, with mountains, and it's also a more urban kind of town-based scene. So you need a location or maybe two locations that can cope with that. So this is my mind map. And I've done my best to kind of lay it out as a mind map. You would obviously hand drawing it, you would use um, more kind of curved lines and make it look a bit more kind of like a mind map, but it, it does need to have the nodes on there and the different points. And you're going to get marks for this question by really unpacking it and also thinking about the scenario that you've been given. It's Alaska, so we need to be thinking about weather conditions. So whatever question you've got, you need to think about that and, and always refer to that in your answer. So that would be my planning for question six and my mind map for question six. Question seven, using the script 
in figure two identify the location, the character and the stage direction. Now the location is the edge of the forest, not Alaska. The mark scheme specifically says do not accept Alaska or Canada on their own as these are not the filming locations in the script. In the script it specifically says edge of forest. Number two, identify a character. You can either have presenter or brown bear. And number three, stage direction, while well, specifically says walking to camera. So I'm going to put that as my answer. So move on to B. The script is created. It is edited by different members of the pre-production team. State one way that the script could be named to keep track of its different edits. And we're looking at version control there, e.g. Alaska, V1, V2. So looking at version or V, V1, V2, etc. Question eight. A series of digital graphics will be created to promote the campaign. Identify the most suitable file format for each of the digital graphics listed. Explain why it's the most suitable file format. So start with a printed poster. Now poster usually will be a PDF. Now why a PDF? Because it can be viewed across many different platforms from web-based to browsers on, on the smartphone, browsers on the computer. You can open it quite easily on most applications. So it's very, very portable. So if you think about a PDF file, you can open it with many different devices and that makes it highly portable. Web graphic. Now, there's many different options for web graphic. You could have PNG, SVG, you could have JPEG. If you're thinking about scalable vector graphic, SVG, one advantage of that is that it can be scaled up because it's vector based. It can be scaled up quite easily and not lose any of the quality. So I'm going to go with my file format being SVG. Now you could have PNG because it keeps transparencies. It can be used in different colored backgrounds. PNG was invented for use for use, specific uses on as a web graphic. So that would be perfectly acceptable as well. You could also have GIF as it can be animated, loads quickly and JPEG because it's lossy it can be a smaller file size, but it does keep its quality. Question nine. Question nine is based on figure three, which is here. Figure three is a draft of a storyboard for a section of one of the 30 second films. The storyboard will be given to the camera crew who will create the film. So here we've got six frames in the storyboard, clouds, mountains, under the sea, etc. And we need to read this very carefully because it says, specifically says the storyboard will be given to the camera crew who will create the film. So we're thinking about the camera crew in our answer, which is coming up now. So question nine, discuss the strength, the suitability of the content of the storyboard in figure three for the camera crew. You should include the strengths, weaknesses and areas for improvement. Quality of written communication, QWC will be assessed in your answer to this question. This question is 12 marks. Now, the exam is now on 15 minutes and it's 12 marks, but I, I would recommend you plan this. Although you haven't got a lot of time, I would recommend you do create a plan. Why? And you get some extra paper and you create a plan for your answer to this. Why? Because it gives you time to think. Your brain can dump whatever it needs to on paper quickly and you don't have to worry about structure. So you write everything you need to, everything you understand about that on scrap paper first. It will allow you to create a more cohesive answer that reads better. You're getting marked on QWC, Quality of Written Communication. So even though you think that's quite a lot of extra time, an extra five minutes isn't actually much. And I'd recommend you create a plan. So that extra five minutes creating a plan is going to be time well spent because you're more likely to get 12 marks when considering you're looking at QWC here. So what I do is lay out my plan. So in the middle, I'm writing suitability of storyboard, and then I'm looking at the positives and negatives there. So you can read that clearly laid out, good use of space, good flow to storyboard, negatives, no timing. So we're thinking back to the scenario. It is a camera crew that's going to be using this. So there's no timing. So it'd be hard to know long how, how long the film needs to be. Lack of detail on camera angles on some frames. Some frames had a real lack of detail about the actual camera angles. Camera movement. So I'm thinking about positive and negatives of the camera movement there. 
So thinking about, it is a film crew going to be using this. So positives, information about some of the camera angles are there, but negatives then, not all frames contain information or very limited about camera angles. For example, the under the sea frame was very limited in its detail about camera angles. So adding a bit more to my plan here, I've got layout of storyboard, positives and negatives there. So positives, it is clearly laid out. Each frame has a title and the drawings are quite clear. Negatives, lack of numbering on each frame. If you refer back to the storyboard, there was a lack of numbering, so not clear. Does it go, obviously it probably goes left to right, doesn't it? So left to right, but it could, it could go um, top to bottom there. We're not sure. We're just going to assume that it's going left to right. No timings on the frame, so it isn't clear how much each one will run. There is a fair amount of detail, but we go from the clouds to the mountains and um, the camera flies through, the, through them and then straight to the mountains. So does that does that fade into the mountains? How does that work? There's not a lot of detail about that. And then we go to fitness for purpose. And in that, we really need to refer back, refer back to who's going to be using that. And that is the camera crew. So think about, okay, some positives. So we need to have some positives in there. Clear layout that can provide details at a glance. So the camera crew can look at it at a glance and see the details. All the frames are detailed. They're fairly detailed, but there's no fine detail in there on the timings, limited detail about camera angles, limited detail about each frame, colors, or any other fine details that we'd need. So think looking at that storyboard as a camera crew, member of the camera crew, could you do your job? And it's probably not particularly easy to do your job. So when I've done my planning, I go back to my exam paper and I can construct my answer. So that five minutes is really worth it because you're going to get your mark for quality of written communication. If you just sit down and scribble whatever comes into your head, there's no way you're going to, going to hit, hit the mark for quality of written communication. So I've just written an introduction there. I've evaluated the 30, 30 second storyboard for one of the films. I will look at the positives and negatives. Storyboard is for the camera crew. So this is my main area to assess. And I've written the clarity of storyboard. So you can read that there. All I've done is taken what I've done in my plan and just put it into sentences. It needs to be in sentences. So taken out the bullet points and put it into sentences and written positives and negatives there and made that really clear. Then I've moved on to look at the camera movement and put the heading there and looked at positives and negatives there and written it in full sentences. Then I've looked at the layout of the storyboard, positives and negatives there as well. Then I've covered the fitness for purpose, positives and negatives, and I've written a small conclusion. Overall, I think the storyboard is not fit for purpose for the camera crew due to the lack of detail, particularly with the times which will limit their ability to do the job properly. So if we think about the mark scheme there, I've used some subject terminology there and I think I've really hit the mark, level three, nine to 12 marks, because I've described the positives and negatives, the strengths and weaknesses of the storyboard. And I've shown a good understanding of the use of the storyboard and linked it back to the target audience, which you must do in any scenario. You must link it back to the scenario in any exam question, link it back to the scenario there. And as I said, I think my quality of written communication is better. So to finish off, this is my full answer then to take in everything that I've shown you before and just laid it out as a full answer. This is what I'd hand in to get my 12 marks. As I said, because I took my time and I planned it, I think my quality of written communication is actually better. So that completes the whole of the paper. I'd just like to say big thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. and I'll make more of these iMedia videos. So thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video. Bye bye.